Hi guys, so we're going to have a little presentation here talking about different types of problem solving and in particular about what kind of problem solving can be used or is best to use uh, for computers because not all types of problems can be solved by computers. So this presentation gives you an idea, a bit of an insight into that and it's something that we'll expand on in your next lesson. Okay, enjoy. The learning goal for this activity is to understand which types of problems are best solved by computers. And we'll do that by going through and looking at the types of problems and those which actually are more acceptable for computer use. It's probably best to start with the question, what is a computer program? Um, to understand what kind of problems they can actually solve. So generally a computer program is a step-by-step -step instructions to carry out a particular process. So the actual process of computer programming is the problem solving activity that develops those step-by-step -step instructions. Now, computers are dumb. They're not very smart at all. So we need to be quite specific in the instructions that we give. And that's a skill that we're gonna learn over this term. So now let's look at some problem solving techniques. And there's gonna be five that we're gonna look at all up. And the first one is good old trial and error, or if you're doing console computer gaming, it might just be called button mashing. It's just where you just keep trying something. You try it, does it work? No, okay, I'll try something else. Does it work? I'll try something else. Um, it's inefficient, um, and it definitely doesn't work with complex problems. You definitely wouldn't want to try to create rockets this way, or um, maybe a nuclear weapon this way. But on the other hand, for some simple problems, um, where there isn't a wide range of possibilities, it can be pretty effective. And we've all heard the stories about someone, or you've had the experience when you were trying to think of someone's name or a movie or something, you couldn't think of it, and then you forget about it, and a little while later, you suddenly remember what the answer is. And this is a little bit, a little bit of an experience that we refer to as the Eureka experience. It's where the answer to a difficult problem or something you're trying to solve and you just couldn't work it out and you just give up on it and you don't worry about it, but then suddenly, something occurs to you. And what's actually happened is that your brain subconsciously has continued to work on it and it's put the solutions together. And it's suddenly, when it works things out, it lets the conscious mind know. Now, there's a chance that this may never be duplicated by a computer, the computer may never be capable of doing this, but some of the advances that have been happening in machine learning and AI over the last couple of years might actually bring that into doubt whether that ever occurs, whether computers will ever be able to actually do a urethra experience. The third kind of problem solving technique we're going to be talking about is judgments. And that's basically where you take a situation and you compare the evidence against what's expected or a criteria. So you look at something and you compare it and you say whether, evaluate whether the criteria is made and you judge whether this is good or this is bad. Has it uh, achieved what I expected it to achieve? So that's judgments. The fourth problem solving technique is analytical approach. And this is basically a systematic way to go about solving a problem. So where you sit down, you have a plan, and you execute that plan step by step. So an example might be a pros and cons chart where you sit down and you say, okay, do I want to buy a new car? So the pros you might say, the car looks kind of cool and the car's pretty fast. Um, and it's in a color that I like. The cons are, it's a little bit out of my price range or it might be expensive to run, or I actually don't have a license yet. So in the end, you'll sit there and you say, where are the pros and cons of that decision that way? The important thing about this is that it's actually taking a very measured, systemic, systematic approach, taking step by step to achieve the problem, to solve the problem. Next, we have working backwards, and that's where you start at the objective and you systematically deconstruct it to determine the steps needed to achieve it. So you might sit there and say, um, it may be an actual goal you wish to achieve. I wish to um, get a particular grade. Okay, what steps do I need to take to actually achieve that grade? Or you might um, have another problem, and that problem might be that you wish to you decide to purchase a car, and now you no longer can afford it, you don't have the money for it. So you sit there and say, my end objective is $10,000. 
So what are the steps I need to do to actually achieve that? Uh, starting with your objective and working way back. Another example is the classic in engineering, reverse engineering, where they may find a design and they pull the design to pieces to work out what it is that um, you need to do to actually create that design. So now that we've looked at some, at least five different types of problem solving, we can now generally group those into two umbrellas or two different groups of problem solving. And the first one is called heuristics. And that would generally cover the first three that we talked about, which would be the um, random trial and error method, or it may be the judgment method, or it may be the original method. Um, and it's generally how heuristics is talked about how humans solve problems. It's a kind of the mental shortcuts that we take to make decisions. Um, basically, heuristics is the stored bits and pieces of experience that we have in our mind, and we call upon them to solve a problem. Um, and a classic example of that is crossing the road. You don't go through an analytical process to decide whether you can cross the road in time. You'll stand on the side of the road, you'll observe the traffic, you'll note a car, you look at it long enough to determine how fast you think it's traveling. You don't get a radar out and estimate it or do any trigonometry. You sit there and have a look at it. And then from your experience of how fast you can travel and normally how fast those cars do travel and how far you have to go across the road, you make a decision about whether or not it's safe to cross. There's no calculations actually involved. Um, you're relying upon your past experience. And so therefore you're relying on your heuristics to decide whether or not you cross the road. The second grouping is what we call algorithmic methods. And this is generally talking about um, the process where you analyze a problem situation and requirement, and then you create a step-by-step -step instruction um, to solving that problem. You would guess that, that would tie very much into the last two. So whether it be um, working backwards from the solution, so the reverse engineering, or whether it be the actual analytic process of, of problem solving. So to actually, this is the kind of problem solving that we do use in computers. And when it's using computers, it's called the information processing model. So basically it talks about the fact that about the fact that input comes from outside of the computer source. It enters into the computing system where it is processed, it's changed. And then finally, the computer then sends that information out. That's called output. So a classic example of this might be what you're currently doing while watching the actual this slide here is that you're We'll click on the mouse to move to the next slide. So that's the input it's from outside the computer, the actual click. And then the computer will take that and will process it and it will solve the problem. And the output would be onto the screen that the computer will actually move the slide on to the next slide. So that's an algorithmic method. It's really important. It's analytical, it's step by step, and it has a very clear process of how you actually go about achieving these problems. So just to finish off this little presentation, I want to provide you with a scenario. And the next two slides, you have the chance to answer this scenario and speculate what John would do if John was using um, heuristic or using algorithmic um, problem solving techniques. So scenarios is that John has just finished a movie marathon at the local cinema. Um, he walks out to the shopping center after and realizes that after 12 hours of films and too much sugar and caffeine, he can't remember where he parked. So on the next two slides, you get a chance to say, how will John find out or work out where he's parked first as a human being using heuristic methods? And then secondly, as if he was a robot using algorithmic methods. So submit those and we'll have a chat about them in class. Okay, thanks a lot.